Welcome back everyone, I bought this little bottle here of oxygen, which I actually thought was empty. Yet it was actually completely full and therefore we are going to burn a few things. This piece of aluminium pipe was connected to the oxygen bottle. With this we are going to introduce the gas to a few test substances. A few of them you have probably never seen being burned. We started with sugar, which was actually harder to ignite than I thought. But once the sugar started burning, it burned pretty violently. Next was flour, which burned better than I thought. And here's the walnut. The walnut burns really well because it contains a lot of fats. This is vitamin C, which needs to melt first before it can burn. Vitamin C burns extremely well under an oxygen atmosphere. The caffeine we ignited unfortunately sublimed away and I don't know if it was the wood that burned or if it was the actual caffeine. What you saw being burned here was ketyl alcohol. Ketyl alcohol is normally used in cosmetics. The most beautiful of the testing substances was the sulfur. Sulfur burns with a blue flame. As sulfur burns, sulfur dioxide is being produced and sulfur dioxide is a toxic gas you should definitely not inhale. Magnesium powder also burns extremely good under normal air, but with pure oxygen it burns even brighter. And this is red phosphorus. When being burned, phosphorus pentoxide is produced. Here we have glacial acetic acid, which is currently frozen in its bottle. I fortunately managed to get a few chunks of glacial acetic acid out of the bottle and onto this piece of wood. Acetic acid is normally really flammable, but because such a small amount was used, the fire wasn't that impressive. Now to a few liquids. In here is diethyl ether. As with the other substances, when oxygen was induced, the flame got hotter, brighter and a lot bigger. This is an even more interesting substance, dichloromethane. Under normal conditions, dichloromethane will not burn by itself. However, with pure oxygen, it will burn. Besides a lot of smoke being produced, I'll have to warn you. It is possible that a small amount of highly toxic phosgene gas will be produced as well. Phosgene is one of those substances you don't want to work with, you don't want to inhale and that you also don't want to produce. In this burning dish there was acetone. The combustion of acetone wasn't too spectacular. Here's more interesting stuff, methanol. Under normal lighting the methanol flame is nearly invisible and even with pure oxygen it is just barely visible. Benzene is another one of those substances that's cool to burn. In normal air a lot of soot is being produced and some carbon flakes will be flying around in the air. With the oxygen there was a huge cloud of black carbon dust in the air that was flying around in my whole yard and I sadly didn't get that on camera but it looked interesting. The substance that was hard to ignite at first was propylene glycol. Once we got the propylene glycol hot enough, it started to evaporate and it started to burn. This was one of the most calm flames of this experiment. Here is benzyl alcohol, here benzoic acid, this is aspirin and this is a plain candle. The benzyl alcohol also made a lot 
of black smoke like the benzene did. For the benzoic acid I actually don't know if this even burns. But it look like looks like it burns pretty well and it's extremely hot. And it also keeps burning after I stop the oxygen from to it. Here's the aspirin. Aspirin also burns well enough. This is one of the chemicals you probably wouldn't expect to burn. And to the candle. You can also get the wax to ignite on itself and not just the wick of the candle. Let's try another aromatic compound. Here's naphthalene. I'd predict that naphthalene gives off even more smoke than benzene did. But let's see if this is actually true. Yes, it absolutely produces even more of those black things. Let me get that in video. You see these? All of this it's black stuff produced by the naphthalene burning. Here we have a small pile of homemade hydrazine sulfate. Will it burn? Doesn't look like it will burn. No, it will not burn. Here we have polystyrene. This is polyethylene and this is a small pile of iron powder. I didn't get the polystyrene on camera the first time, so we had to film it again. Went off like a rocket. Now to the iron powder, which should be the most interesting part. It screwed a lot of sparks. And it melted and made this nice red glowing pearl of iron, which you can see here. Here's camphor, which is often burned in Buddhist temples for religious practices, and here's vanillin, which tastes like vanilla. Camphor also burns by itself, but with oxygen, it burns even hotter. Ah, I'm going to push it right here, so it doesn't light up all vanillin. Now to the vanillin. Vanillin also burns pretty well. Citric acid is also probably going to burn. Now currently the wood is burning. Have to get that citric acid hotter. Will it burn? Yeah, the citric acid starts to burn. It smells interesting. This is a piece of wood, which we will try to cut with oxygen. It gets extremely hot. Uh. Stops burning when we 
take the oxygen from it and if we reintroduce it, it will start burning again. And we cut through the wood. If you liked today's video, make sure to drop me a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more chemistry content in the future. This was just a short clip of me playing with some oxygen because I need the gas bottle. And I wish all of you a nice day. Until next time. Bye.